starting this fresh for YouTube. We've done some nattering and catching up. Now we're getting ready to dive into the game proper. Um, so yes, this is my second playthrough of Night in the Woods. Um, it is going to be Greg edition. Um, it is going to be the uh, weird autumn edition. And um, I am hopefully going to have things to say about the story decisions now that I kind of know what happens. So... <laughs> hitbox. I, I had somebody try to convince me to go on Hitbox, and I was like, no, everyone I know is on Twitch, and I'm glad I did that, because I've met some super awesome people on Twitch. And on YouTube, YouTube, you're good, too. I've made some friends there, too. Yeah, no, YouTube, well, no, the thing is, what happened, ADHD Space Pilot, is that YouTube people complained about the pregame chatting, so I started cutting it off, so they don't have to deal with it. Yes, Eels, Feels, and Steals Edition. That was, um, that was Dan from uh, from Discord who said that, and I thought it was really funny, so I tweeted it at people. Anyway, we're gonna do this. We're gonna dive right in, and we're gonna see how this goes. Did I hit the right button? I might have hit the wrong button. What button did I hit? Oh, no, I hit the right button. Okay. Oh, this is gonna. I'm actually gonna like know the context, which is interesting because this game starts off not telling you anything and there's like a lot of mystery and some of the mysteries get solved and some of them don't um but it's I don't know it's going to be an interesting experience playing through it again and actually knowing all of the context of things and I'm curious whether the game's effectiveness depends on you not knowing things or if it holds up upon replay where you get an extra layer of things instead of just um feeling like there's nothing there without the mystery I'm assuming it's the former because this is a very well written game um all right Oh, that's right. I forgot about this. I wonder what a difference this makes. No, we're not. A, well, how's this? We're avoiding spoilers specifically when it comes to um, stuff with Greg because I haven't done that yet. Um, and we are. We're assuming at this point I have played the game. OK, YouTube, Twitch, if you guys haven't played this game and you don't want spoilers, I have seen this game before. I have played this game before in its entirety. So we will be talking about the game in its entirety. This is a replay. So if you don't want spoilers, um, if you want to watch a Let's Play of it, you can go back to my archives. I played through the entire thing. Um, kind of spread out. But uh, yeah, I think I think last time I said the Highway 1 too because that's one that makes the most sense to me. So we're going to go with the Flood. Oh, no. Okay, this is new. Oh, Greg. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. Okay, well, already this is exciting. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, that's significant. There's a little, um, they just do such a good job setting up Casey. Yes, I agree with ADHD. This game is best experienced blind. It is not as imperative to play blind as Undertale, where the less you know the better, but this is definitely a game that you want to experience as the game developers intended. Um, because they do a lot of really clever things with expectations and interpretation, um, and I would hate for that to be spoiled for anyone. A moment for a poker face? What? Let's see. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yes, don't be like Squizgar. Don't spoil yourself on those things. Oh, what did I pick last time? Oh, man. I really want to play through Lost Constellation again. Let's see. Hmm. Which one did I pick last time? I'm pretty sure I picked this one. I want this one because this is something that we're going to talk about that I'm very interested in. I went looking for the gods. I died in lonely places. I think I picked the prayer too. Oh my god, do you hear the audio picking up?
Did I pick the playground last time? Oh, man. We do. Yeah, no. It's definitely setting atmosphere a lot. I love the way this is written like a poem, you know? Oh, man. A missable dialogue propped I never discovered in the town. Oh, no! That means every day I missed it. That's a shame. Yeah, the mill seems like what I would have picked. Either the mill or the playground. Let's look at the playground. Hmm... <laughs> See, like, it's interesting because the whole game I expected gran grandpa's or granddad's ghost to show up, you know? It's very much, it has the feel of a ghost story. It has elements with ghosts and the supernatural. And it starts with granddad's death here. Um... Okay, so we're on the bus, which I don't think I noticed that this was a bus. Hi, May. It's been a while. How are you doing, buddy? <laughs> Thanks, New Wax Ghost. Oh, actually, I'm going to play Kentucky Route Zero at some point. Somebody sent or sending it to me. I try to remember the details. Somebody said they were going to. I... I'm really excited about it. I'm so excited about it. I'm going to hit it myself in the face with the controller to express my enthusiasm. All right. So it's actually really interesting to be back here. I'm sorry, May. You are our parents. Forgot you. All right. Miss Fiasco Fox, your type, May. Hello, Caller Media. Historic. <laughs> oh, man. Aw. I'm actually really good. Um, I can't complain. Life's really good right now. Um, it, it, yeah, there's, here's, how, how's that? We'll take a moment um, at the beginning of the stream to just say I have had a really crazy two years. Um, and I've streamed pretty reliably through all of it, all things considered. Um, I've been really, I'd like to think pretty open and honest with people about some extraordinarily tough times in my life. Um, probably the hardest time in my life. And I've had a few things that weren't super easy when I was younger. Um, but I just wanted to say, like, things are pretty good right now. Um, and I wanted to thank all of you guys who've been here with me for that um, to kind of experience this um be there for me care like it's I guess kind of weird to have a whole bunch of internet strangers who care about what's going on in your life but it really means a lot to me so thank you um yeah so now as we start 2018 um I think there's good things ahead I I don't think we're entirely out of the woods yet like I'm sure there's going to be more hard times but well thank you Chrono honestly Chrono you've been there since like the second week I started streaming um, and I've appreciated your support and positivity and help and just belonging to the community since then. You can go ahead and get too real. That's what we do, Chrono. We get too real here. Sorry, YouTube, you have to deal with the fact that even though I'm going to talk about the game, I'm going to talk about me. <laughs> I'm going to talk about my friends. But that's what I do. Um, yeah, well, I'm glad, Nick Buntline. I'm very glad. And it's fun. Like, at MAGFest, I hung out with a bunch of Flutie Pie people. We actually had, like, an entire crew of us. Um, which, like, like the year before, we'd had, like, a really brief meetup with a few people, and I didn't know what to do. But, like, this year, we, like, stayed in a hotel room, like, a couple of hotel rooms together, and we hung out. And it was really awesome, and we're planning to get together and do, like, a, a, a like, share a house, like, meetup event of our own at some point. And it's just, like, crazy? Like, when did that happen? But I like it. So, um, thanks for being part of my community, folks. Thanks for helping make my year that was bad a little bit better um and hopefully we can all make our years collectively better this year <laughs> that's true andrew mallon half gaming stream half video blog i don't know i've had occasionally people complain like lauren you are so slow and i'm like 
there's so many people out there who are fast. I can't be fast even if I want to, so I'm just going to... Oh, Chrono is being adorable. Yay. Chrono, thank you. I know I've never met you, but I feel kind of like I know you, and I'm hoping at some point I will meet you. So I actually have tea this time. <clears throat> yeah. I feel like it becomes a sense of community. It's not just me talking to a box. It's a bunch of people hanging around together and the excuse is me talking to a box. I'm actually going to be in Orlando presenting at an academic conference about robot stories and somebody else at the conference is going to be presenting a paper on Undertale and I'm not going to be there for that day so I figure I'm going to email that person and then stalk them at the event. That seems good, right? <laughs> Tea loves, I feel like that's, that's, that's the way of it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> May, you're such a smart ass. Sorry, I swore. You know, Chrono, actually, if there are a few... Oh, you know, we could get... um, There's a couple of people we could get, I think. We could do a little... We could do a meetup. Figure that out. <coughs> oh, my God comedy well Sam sometimes I just say tea tea loaves <laughs> oh man that actually sounds like a delicious baked good oh my gosh one of those internet dates oh my god dating the entire internet huh all right Garbo and Malay you do that Okay, there's going to be something snarky. <laughs> Tea loaves. Those actually sound like maybe cats. Okay. So, guys, I'm just going to say, okay, this character right here. When I finished, say the thing, what the thing. Oh, they didn't say... No, they don't say the thing here. Interesting, Krona. I wonder why that is. So, a lot of people asked me when I beat this game whether I thought that the magic was ambiguous. And I was like, no. It is entirely unambiguous. There are other things in the game that are ambiguous and there are things that... Um, they kind of set up only to change or like there's like red herrings. There's a few things that like I don't know exactly what happened there <coughs> But I feel that there is very pointedly No ambiguity about who and what the janitor guy is and I'm really curious what talking to him now is going to be like The only thing I wasn't sure about which somebody else was talking about. I think they had a good point There's a lot of deities in this world um or, or supernatural figures. That's kind of made clear. Um, but somebody postulated that this is Pastor K's. And I think that's correct. Um, I'm going to pay attention to see if she talks about doors. Because you notice he's working on a door. What's the talk button? No. This game is not maybe magic. I cannot even begin to understand how anybody could play this game and think that the magic isn't real in it. Short of the game, like, pausing and having somebody show up like a game developer and say, the magic in the game is real. I can't think of any way they could possibly be more blatant about the fact that it's real. Um, so. Yeah, but I feel like if you're having to come up with a super crazy, elaborate, hard-to-believe story to try to convince yourself that there's not magic in the story, that says more about you and what you want to believe in a story than it does about the story itself. And I say that 
as a person who writes magic realism that has blatant magic in it, and I've had people say, well, no, the magic's not real. Maybe if you did this, then we'd know the magic was real. So I wrote another story with that, and they're like, oh, no, I still can't tell it's real. Maybe if you did this, too, we would be able to tell the magic's real. So I did that, and they're like, no, I don't think there's magic. I think it's all ambiguous. So um, I don't think it could be mundane. Like, there, I don't think there's any way this game could possibly be mundane. Like... Um, I talked to a friend who referred to it kind of as faith, and so I think, like, the concept of faith magic, like, hyphenated. Because, like, for me, when I'm talking about magic, I'm not talking about magic missile. I'm talking about something deeply personal about the way that you engage with the universe. What other people might call miracles, to me, like, that's magic. Um, like, well, I know Krona, but that doesn't really matter that she's a cat, you know? Like that's how the game is skinned, that's what the people look like. It would be like giving every character in the game purple hair, but that has absolutely no bearing whatsoever on how real the game is or isn't. Um, like, I feel like people are so uncomfortable at the thought that there could just be magic in the world, that they will find ways to excuse it away in any sort of story that seems realistic. Um, and... I don't really think it leaves the door open. Yeah. Well, and I do think that there's some truth to that, Nick, but I think that part of the, uh, I think part of the, part of what's in it also, though, is, is finding the magic in the mundane. Um, and it doesn't actually have a really negative relationship with religion, which is really interesting and kind of unique <laughs> among things, um, targeting like this age demographic and nerds in general. Um, but it's actually really sweet and almost tender. Um, like I said, like, I mean, obviously Pastor Kay is awesome. Like, she's the kind of person I would have a crush on if I knew her in real life. Um, she's super, super cool. And she's never mocked for her faith. So, I do think, I do think it is a, a world in which magic happens. And maybe I am more open to that because for me, like, the, 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 the idea of faith is magic. Um... Whatever you call it, like, whether you believe that, like, any number of things, really any faith tradition as far as I'm concerned is magic. Well, that's fine with me. I'm not using that in a derogatory manner because I, I have a connection to that sort of thing myself. Um, but, yeah, so this is not a mortal creature. This is a non non-mortal care I, I don't know if he's immortal i don't know exactly what his role is i don't know exactly how deities are in this world because they're not like the omnipotent one of everything um but just as there's the forest god i don't know who or what this guy is um but i think he's in line with that well no but adhd that's the thing they're not the same thing may is mentally ill and dissociative and there is magic. You can have both in the same thing. I have written so many stories in which magic is a stand-in for mental illness. Like, So this is something that I'm really interested in. But you can have a story that has a mentally ill character and a story that has magic. And you can kind of use that to to complicate the situation. But to me, like, part of the point of this is that like there can be magic and that doesn't undo anything about May or her story. Um... I don't know that May will become a witch. I think May wants to be able to exist like a normal person in the normal world, and I hope she gets that. <coughs> anyway, this is the kind of conversation that we're going to be having a lot with this game. And you're free to disagree with me, but I um, I wish I could actually have a conversation with Scott Benson about this, because I'd really like to know what his intention was writing this. Um, but I'm also kind of afraid of asking, because there's something to be said for, again, you getting out of it what you get out of it. I think May could totally be a witch in one of Laurie's films. That seems reasonable. Oh my god. <laughs> Cleaning up other people's messes. Looks that way. Looks like that's what I'm going to do. I don't know if this counts as philosophical. I don't know if this is, is this philosophy. I think it's more existential, you know? Because, like, it could just be, like, literary. Like, let's talk about the, the like, artistic and creative thing. But I'm I'm inherently going to pull into ex pull existential stuff into it just because of my own personal relationship with 
with the openness to magic as well as mental illness because that's the thing so i have a mental illness um i have both a mood and a personality disorder um <laughs> only one of which is medicatable so that's an adventure um and i've had that basically we think extremely early onset like when i was five or six years old so that will kind of warp your view of the world um and potentially related to that potentially not i have an openness to believing in what others might call magic or faith magic um yeah, no, I think the or something is is intentional, Proto. I think that that's kind of what it's doing. Um, is existentialism part of... I mean, it is kind of. I don't know. Um, yeah, no, I think this is the absent but caring God. Um, Chrono, I don't think that being on the autis autism spectrum is a mental illness. Because it's not an illness, really. It's a way of being. Like, that's why, like, I don't know. I wouldn't... I would refer to myself as neurotypical, but mentally ill. So... Um, because in my case, like, like, like the, the illness is treated with a medication to try to fix the problems with um, the chemicals in my brain. So, I relate. It's funny, a lot of people are like, man, the world is so real. It's too real. The things that happen with May's family, that's too real. The things that are happening to Possum Springs is too real. And I'm like... I have heard people talk about that, but that's never been my experience. But then they're like, mental illness, and what is real and what isn't real, and how do you exist in the world, and can you figure out what your sense of self is or what the world is? And I'm like, I relate to that. So <laughs> it may not be the way everyone else relates to Night in the Woods, and maybe that's why that's what I'm kind of centering in on. Hahaha. <laughs> I'm definitely not a nihilist. I think I'm pretty far from a nihilist. I can't remember what. There's some school of philosophical thought that I fit, but I don't remember what it is. So he's breaking the door trying to fix it. <laughs> I wouldn't call this a horrifying game. Like, there's horror in it, but it's also extremely uplifting. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's true, Chrono. <laughs> uh. Oh, that is rather impressive. The phone is removed. Yeah, no, that's a good question. Like, what would you do with the payphone that you stole? <laughs> oh May, you're amazing. See the thing is I'm not I'm not existential either because I don't believe that the universe doesn't care. Not quite. But I think that that's a beautiful philosophy. I think that's isn't that more humanism though, really? <laughs> Okay, Nick Bunlin. Well, I mean, the ending of this game gave me nightmares. Like, literally, I, I had trouble sleeping and had a number of, of nightmares for a week or so afterwards. Um, but yeah, there there are some scary... I don't know that a three-year-old... I don't think a three-year-old would pick up on a lot of the scary stuff. It's very singing. Aha, they're like, hey, arm mechanics, you're going to use this to do some crimes later on. And jump on everything. I should probably make sure I'm not missing things. Not an NCR spy. Yeah, no, I uh, I, I beat it last time um, I played this game. So if you want to go back and see the ending and see me freak out a whole bunch, it's there. Up on YouTube. I freaked out a lot. Oh, hey! <coughs> Fun little detail. Um... Which we'll probably talk about again when we get there. So you, you guys know how I have a... You know how I have a, a cave phobia, right? Like... Do you know why I actually have a cave phobia? Because people think that it's claustrophobia. And it's not. Because I'm like totally fine in elevators and things like that. So it's specific to caves. 
So the reason why I have a cave phobia is because there's a little part of my brain that can't quite disbelieve in like demons and hell and voids and terrible un unspeakable evils. <clears throat> so ever since I was a little girl, I have had a horror of the never ending dark of a cave being a void into the unknown in which unspeakable horrors dwell. So like, that's like the, it doesn't ever come up, which is why you guys haven't heard me talk about that before. Um, but that's the real reason why I have fa a cave phobia. Yeah, no, right? That's why, I, <laughs> that's why I had nightmares. So people are like, so am I gonna be scared from this game? And I'm like, probably not. <laughs> It just happens to tap into very, very specifically the absolute embodiment of my absolute phobia. So, yeah, it's actually kind of hilarious because I haven't had to confront that like in anything in a really long time. But I was like, well, OK, like if you go back and watch it, like you can see I'm like like turning like like white faced and I'm like all like hunched over. Yeah, no, it's like exactly, like exactly it. So, yeah. Let's give this, let's give this man some cola. Yeah, blues. Uh, I was having a conversation about Dark Souls last night and how everything that I have to do in Dark Souls is going to be bad for me emotionally. But we'll see how I get through it. I will have friends. Yummers. Hmm. <clears throat> I can see that with a giant shark thing. He drills it upside down. <laughs> yeah, May so like desperately wants to be validated for her cleverness. And he's just so weird. He's like, it's finished. Goodbye. Like, like, the, the, this is just something, you know? And then turns out the lights. So I haven't seen the forest god, Andrew Mallon. Is the forest god the same kind of creature, the same bird creature? Because if, if he is, like, the same kind of bird creature as the forest god, then yes. I would totally buy that. I should probably play Lost Constellation again and actually do that. Like, yeah, no, I, have, well, I didn't. I didn't do that one section. I didn't get in to go see the Forest God in Lost Constellations. So, see, like, if you really desperately don't want there to be magic in the game for some reason. Like, if it's really important to you that there not be magic in, in Night in the Woods, you can find ways to excuse it, and that's your right. No, I didn't do everything in Lost Constellation. I was actually really disappointed, because I also didn't go back to talk to the kid again in the witch's house. So, those are, and that's like the stuff that I was most, well, second most interested in. Adina and her friend slash girlfriend. And like little things, I don't think it made that sound last time. Hmm. I guess people must not have noticed the bugs. Oh, hey, so, so you guys know I moved to Pennsylvania not that far from Night in the Woods, right? And it's really, like looking at the landscapes in this game, it really, 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 really looks like the game. And so you'll be driving at night. Yes, no spoilers for the Greg path, that's correct. So like you'll be driving at night and there'll be like this like like dimness around you and there'll be like different degrees of darkness and um like then like on the horizon they'll just be like these like they'll be like this like like dark mass just like this like creepy um harsh edged dark mass with glowing red lights on it because it's a factory or something with lights on it and it's just really 
cool. Um, because for me, like the landscape here will always be night in the woods. So is it just me? Like, I'm pretty sure that the bugs did not make noise last time. I would have noticed that. But there's a lot more audio cues. Let's see. How could anybody possibly convince themselves that Greg is a girl? Angus talks about being super gay. He like talks about that pointedly in his scene. Oh man. There's totally a train that goes right by my office at work. It's actually kind of awesome. <laughs> oh my god, Andrew Mellon. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I feel like they, like, put the bugs making noise so that you can notice that the bugs are there. Oh, you're going to do this to me, are you? Boing, boing, boing. Oh. Oh, oh, okay. Buggies. Like, May doesn't ever acknowledge that the bugs follow her around until B points it out. B points it out. Again, as a person who writes magic realism, people say, well, if you want me to know it's magic, have a character who's not mentally ill point out the thing that they see. So you have somebody who's not the mentally ill main character say, that's a strange and bizarre na unnatural phenomenon that I'm looking at right here. And the other character's like, huh? And they're like, I witness with my eyes that are not a crazy person's eyes. A thing is happening that is outside of the ordinary. Perhaps things outside the ordinary happen in this story. And then people are like, I think the magic's all in her head. So... <laughs> <laughs> negligent parents. It's funny because her parents are actually super rad and I love them dearly. <laughs> what do you mean, Andrew Mallon? My buggies are still here. Oh no, I lost my buggies. Well... Let's go jumping off a cliff. Boing, boing. Whee! Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, I know Andrew Mullen, which is why, like, I don't have characters be like, gosh, there's magic in this world. Like, they'll be like, that is a really weird and bizarre thing that happens. Like, okay. <coughs> I have a story in which a character has, um, um, like, she thinks she's a siren. She's got this magical voice that influences people. Um, and it influences animals and things, and it draws them to her. Um, and, and I was like, okay, people are going to say this is ambiguous. So at one point, she is singing, and, like, all the, like, little birds and squirrels and stuff, because she's outside, like, come flocking to her, which I guess could all be in her head. But then another character comes out, and it's like, wow, it's like you're a Disney princess or something like that. That's weird. And then the story continues. That thing happened! Somebody else commented on it. And people were like, I think she might be in on the mass hallucination too. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I, I, I kind of want to write a story about that now. Dank nature. <laughs> somebody, yeah, I was going to say somebody's really dedicated here. Plastic bags, gross water. Hmm. Oh man, I'm gonna see. Like, there's just like this. Like, one of the things that I love so much about the writing in this game is that it has incredibly simple and incredibly poetic. Like at the same time, these 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 sentences, these thoughts. <laughs> so I don't actually think that May is a witch. I don't think there's anything as literal as that. <coughs> but doop, doop, 
do 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 Herp. Yes! Let's do it! Yeah! Oh my god, I was so scared the first time this happened. It's so, like, it, it's, like, got this visceral feeling. Because, like, the way that, like, the solidity of the sound as you jump, like, and, like, the controller vibrates and this, the sound and the shift of the log, like, just a little bit at first, like, you really feel it. It's pretty great. That was dangerous. And she's like, that was awesome! <laughs> I love you, May. Yes, no, I would say May is a witch enthusiast. That is true. Oh my god. <laughs> May has a witch side vlog on Tumblr. Yes, she might. Class of 99. So that's her, her grade, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I don't think I don't think May needs to be a witch. I think May wants to get her brain together. Yay! Hi Annie! Yes, no, the advancing of the text bubbles is very well done. And that's the sort of thing that you might take for granted until you, um, play something badly done. Oh, this is going to teach me how to jump. Well, I did play. I did play through this game before, and it was fantastic. So we're doing a replay. Um, I, did I make that clear? Does it say it's a replay? It's a replay. This is a replay. I've played the game before. So why we're taking it apart? Which is, I thought we were gonna go faster, but it turns out I underestimated my own. But we probably won't get sidetracked talking for twenty minutes about Lock and Sully's. So <laughs> maybe. <clears throat> Weird animals. Dirt possums. <sighs> Mystery beasts. There's just like something about the way she talks is really great. We will get sidetracked by so many things. I have a special talent. Like I should go on my business card. Like Lauren the flute. Sidetrack talker. <clears throat> <laughs> That's true, Nick Buntline. Well, I mean, there's a lot of groundwork to lay, though, talking about, like, overall impressions about the game and stuff like that before we dive in, so it, it makes sense. Oh, man. Well, like, I feel like I got my sidetrack about Lock and Sully's out of my system, although, like, I didn't realize just, like, I just, I, it's really hard for me to not, which, <coughs> by the way, Mr. Karate here, which I'm sure I'm saying wrong, Karate, um, is one of my co-writers on Project Esper. Um, you'd never guess from that name, but she likes Final Fantasy VI. You'll never guess who her favorite character is. Yeah, no, pulling out any sort of piercing is a bad thing. <laughs> Andrew Mala, no, that's true. Um, oh, that mall! Oh, oh, I've been there! I've been to that mall, like, digitally in the game, not in real life. Look, I would make that business card. I would have that business card. I would hand it out. <laughs> you still barely show me. She's super cute, though. Oh. They're like, hey. Do you remember, um... Jumping on logs like that when you were a kid, where they'd have like the bunch of logs and you could jump along them or walk along them. Excuse me. I actually really enjoy heights, like really like heights. Um, hence, like I have like a, a terror of merry-go-rounds, but I love Ferris wheels. They're so cool. It's like flying, which I'm really into. <laughs> well, I'm glad ADHD. I'm glad that you, I'm glad that you appreciate the way I stream. The thing is, I, I can't, I don't think I could stream any other way. Um. Hey, Bloodstained Wings! Thank you for raiding! Did it do that before? Is this like... No. It 
has been a while. I haven't streamed in a month. Okay, I can do it. Hey, dude, if I managed to figure this out, how can other people not figure it out? Seriously. I don't think of myself as being particularly good at things. Although, at least it's not the um, little cute guys wall jumping in uh, Super Metroid. <coughs> <coughs> oh, interesting. I am. I'm doing really well. Um, I, I think 2018 is off to a really good start. I don't know Andrew Mellon and I'm not going to find out. I refuse to give up. We're going to see this through. Hmm. Not in this playground. I feel like I should get my, my crimes book. Oh man, the sound effect. It's going to be nostalgic for me shortly. Well, you have to do the rest of the jumps, otherwise you can't talk to Lori and stuff. And why? Why would you ever not talk to Lori? Seriously. She's like, best NPC. She's so cute. Okay. Whee! Oh no. Oh no. Anti-mall cop. <laughs> you really do have that memorized, don't you, Proto? Well, I guess it... Well, the thing is, though, Andrew Mullen, it's optional, but you miss out on things. <laughs> oh, that's cute, new Axe Ghost. Why would you not talk to Lori? She's, like, the best. <laughs> the very awful Miss Pick. And look, if my parents had showed up to take me from the bus stop, none of this would have happened. Haha, <laughs> I love that she just says no. I kind of want to bless this mess sign. I really kind of do. Yeah, why would you do a speed run of a game like this? Why would you even do that? <laughs> uh, um, we are not doing story spoilers for either the Weird Autumn content or Greg. Because I did the B run last time. The B mode. B. B. Bzzz. So, um... Well, except that the genocide run in Undertale actually serves an emotional purpose, whereas the no-talking run in the woods is just like, why? Why did you do that? <laughs> yeah, no, B is super great. <laughs> I love May's family so much. <laughs> It's so great. That's really cute. <laughs> like, they're just, just like, the, the dynamic between her family, like, there's so much love. And I love the fact that, like, they were seriously screwed up for a long time there. You know, like, it is, there's something really redemptive about the fact that people can be awful and horrible and make good. Um, or be awful and horrible and not make good. Um, like, you know, like it's not an excessively idealistic game. It's not like everybody who does something bad then makes, makes peace with it or becomes better. Um, but like the fact that May's parents, like, especially like her dad, that like, she's like, there was this time and that was terrible. And like her parents are clearly trying desperately to make up for that, but not in a consumed by guilt way, more of a like, like her dad's like, I was not a good dad. I should become a better dad. I need to do better. I will do better. And, like, that's super cool. Um, so I love that. Because <coughs> that's true. Like, people can change. They can get better. They can do better. Or you can have people like Angus's mom where, like, it, that doesn't happen. Yeah. No, like, like, he's actually, like, legitimately a good dad. Like, that is so cool. That is so cool. And it's so, the, 
just this game I don't know whether the people who made this game believe the universe cares or not, but they very definitely believe that people care. And that is inspiring. Like the world needs more things like that. It doesn't have to be over the top. Like, like, okay, I love Steven Universe and I love Undertale. Steven Universe more than Undertale is very like the power of love will do everything. And I think it's really important to have that kind of positivity. But there's a lot more. Um, sorry, Nox is here. So she gets pets. Um, there's a lot more shades of gray in this and a lot more under like a lot more portrayal of the darkness in a in a mundane sense like the the ordinary darkness and and, and common evil of of normal people um so that kind of makes the goodness stand out more because it's like just normal people just being really really good the way that real people can like pastor k means a lot because of other people that exist in the world you know <coughs> You know, I'm not, I mean, Steven Universe has definitely gotten a bit more complicated as things go by, but you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, May. <laughs> that's like, that's my sauce pants. That is your sauce pants. Look what a little cutie she is. I am so glad that this game moved you so much, Annie. Like, it's really beautiful. And that's a really beautiful expression to have. I've actually been thinking about what kind of a tattoo I would get if I got a tattoo. I would probably get a line from my favorite song. And I'd probably get it, like, here, because I like those tattoos. I think they're really cool. There's something really beautiful and artistic about that, you know? I don't care whether people say that my favorite song is super cheesy. I don't care. I love it more than any other song ever. <clears throat> and I, the way, like, the, 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 the love that a Lauren feels for something is pretty intense. So. <sighs> Trunk in the storage room. The cement incident. It's called Flying Free. Good night, Bloodstained Wings. Thanks for coming by and thank you for the host. <laughs> oh my god I mean there are so many good lines like the obvious one is I believe in a universe that doesn't care and people who do like that's one of those lines that you never forget ever like 10 years 15 years down the line if you ask me what I remember from Night in the Woods it'll probably be that line um but there are a lot of other things that are really wonderful and I feel like I should point those out when I get to them <laughs> oh my gosh granddad is pretty great too hi Knox what you doing baby girl look at my cute family She's so happy. Look at her smile when she jumps. It just makes me so happy. Like, just like in the way her, her eyes, like, like, crinkle up a little bit, too. I mean, yes, she's tilting her head back, but also she's smiling. Look at her mouth. It's so great. I love jumping, too, May. Oh, my God. The writing is just so good. Um, but, yeah, so the line that I would want tattooed from the song um, um, there's there's two parts of the verse and I'm not sure which one I would get um, but probably I would get so life's a song that I must sing a gift of love I must share that's probably what I would get tattooed on myself because I first encountered that song uh, like okay I'm going to date myself here which I generally try not to do but like probably like 25 years ago and it still remains deeply personal to me. So, hi, Sun Triangles. I know. Yeah, we're doing this again. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah, no. And you just know that May's grandpa's like, I mean, probably he's like attuned to ghost type stuff. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Or maybe he's trolling. Who knows? It could be anything. Um. Oh my God. I love that she sleeps on a futon, but she doesn't even bother pulling the futon out. I don't think I noticed that before. Mm. 
No, no, some triangles. I'm sorry about that. I really want to do a cover of this song. With my friend, um, Koneko Catboss, Yishan. He's also flute, so I want to do a flute choir of this with him. So good. Did I do something wrong, Chrono? Did I miss a thing? Hey, Ruha! It has been a while. I haven't streamed in a month. Yes. <gasps> Space Dragon? What? <laughs> These are some serious lyrics. Guys! character Ah Ah no It's a dragon! Might help if I remembered what my buttons were. Oh my god. The space dragon is pretty awesome. not end with style. <clears throat> I think I did okay. I love that she's just kind of like jamming. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> he looks kind of like Sharkle in that middle one, doesn't he? Cyberpunk media. <clears throat> hey game bandit. I know it's been a month. A crazy month. Hey bonus Josh. Thank you for the awesome gift. Ow, ow, ow. Sorry, my neck's been giving me some trouble. But I've been sleeping without a pillow, and that makes my neck better. So hopefully another night or two of pillowless sleep, and I will have a better neck. But in the meantime, you guys have to deal with me, like, trying to, like, pull it into submission or something. I don't know. Art is hard. Art is very hard. <sighs> Oh, it's such a, it's really hard the first time you realize that your parents look older. When my dad stopped dyeing his hair, I was really distressed. So we could try that again, but I don't know if there's anything to be gained from it. But I really, 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 really. Well, no, she, I mean, she probably was like reading tabs, right? It's not, a, that's a thing. People read tabs, right? <coughs> I really love how much she likes music. May, I relate. I too think music is great. 
All right. Oh my god, New York's ghost. I'm super glad that you're making a Trogdor reference. God! There's something inherently nostalgic about this song. But I mean, really, when you think about it, just think about how much my life has changed since I started playing this game. And think about the bizarre coincidences that have happened since I started playing this game. Like, you know? Like, she loves her family. <laughs> and it's so cute. I love your family too, May. Oh! Very nice, Ruha. I really like this color. Yeah, we do need to get back into Starbound. Yeah, no, Squizgar, it really feels like, you know, like when I started this game, I was at a job that I'd been working for seven and a half years, um, still kind of beginning to no longer drown in the aftermath of my breakup slash divorce, um, like living in a tiny apartment, not being sure what I wanted to do, knowing I wanted to move away, knowing I wanted to change. Not sure if I could do it or what that would be. And now I've like moved across the country to another time zone to the northeast where it's been snowing like crazy. I literally have never driven in as much snow in my life as I did today. It was crazy. Um, you know, just like things are awesome. And I'm really glad this game is a thing that I'll be able to look back on, I think, and be like, that was a really powerful time of my life. So. <laughs> yeah, some triangles. That is definitely true. At least one related life event for every game streamed. The problem with that as the streamer is that sometimes it means you will never be able to go back and look at things. Um, like, uh, I played Undertale when I was still with my ex-husband and so he came into some of those streams. Um, so I will never be able to look at those again. I don't think. I mean, maybe eventually. Um, and Mother 3 as well I think that I broke up with him while I was in the middle of playing that game and so there were some times that I was crying because of the game and there were some times I was crying not because of the game um, and so it's this kind of like weird thing where I've been like living my life in front of other people and sharing all of this stuff so You know, I don't know that that's wrong, Andrew Mellon. I think we went through the darkest depths and onward. And 2018 is a promising, promising start. I actually have a lot of fun with tarot cards, which if you guys hung out with me at MagFest, you'd probably get a tarot reading. Um, so I did a couple of readings for myself last night. <clears throat> and one of them was just kind of a general reading on things. Um, and it's like, hey, you remember how you were st stuck for years and years, not going anywhere, not doing anything, just kind of existing? Well, you worked really hard, and now you're in a solid place, and soon there'll be change. You just have to go out and take it, and that's really powerful. It's, it, I mean, honestly, T, like, I had to be careful not to use the Discord community too strongly to get myself through it. I found myself becoming kind of a little bit dependent on that support. And I, I had to learn to stand on my own two feet. That's actually part of my problem. Um, but having, having people listen, knowing people cared, knowing that I didn't exist in a vacuum, knowing that if I was 
doing something and then I just I kind of had a breakdown and was crying and didn't know what to do with myself that there would be people who who cared um, on the other side really actually helped a lot and and it's given me direction even when I was not sure how I was gonna make it through to the next day I was like you know I have these people and some of them are like kids that I've got to be there for um, you know I've got to do this and I can make something good and I was like at the time when I was like I don't think I can do anything good like everything I do is bad everything about me is bad I was like well no I can make this one positive space that means something to people and that's one of the things that I've been doing and I've dedicated a lot of my time and energy to things that I care about a lot um, in the past couple of years and achieved way more than I ever thought possible so thank you guys for being part of that yeah Andrew Mellon, that's kind of what I had to shift to. Um, <clears throat> not being needy. <sighs> Thanks, Roja. I do feel like there were times that I was inappropriately, like, having a breakdown in Discord where I was just, like, having, like, a total, utter meltdown. And when that happens, you go to your close friends. You go to your support system. You do not lean on other people, like, that you do not have that kind of a connection to. Um, especially if you have people that you could count as fans, you have to be really careful not to take advantage of that relationship. Um, so... I will forgive myself for that because I was in a very bad way at the time and I was desperate um, but I think I managed to stop and I think things are better and healthier now so yeah you didn't expect this to not be a feels train did you we haven't even gotten into the game really I guess this is the uh, this is the nostalgia that this game is gonna trigger in me Man, the very scary stories compilations that were really in when I was in elementary school. My best friend decided that we should read those in her closet. I had nightmares for weeks. It was not good. <laughs> Eels and feels. <laughs> well, thank you guys. Um, it's okay, Knox. Come on. Come on. Come on, Knox. Oh, and then almost losing Knox last summer. I was speaking of, I need to give you your fluids, don't I? That was my controller. I don't need that or anything like that. Ugh. One of these days I'm gonna break it. And then I will be sad. Yeah, you know, Chrono, there were definitely days I didn't think I was going to. There were days that when you would ask me how I was doing, the only thing I could say was I'm still here. Um, and so there are days I think in most people's lives, but especially those who kind of struggle with mental illness that makes you, I think, sometimes a little more susceptible to the darkness that happens in life. Um, there are days that that happens, but um, you can frequently get through them, so. <clears throat> Helmol Stevenson, my name. Yeah. Yeah, and some days the only thing keeping you going is knowing if there's other people depending on you. Or cats depending on you. Come here, baby. Let's try this again. Come on, my little one. Oh my gosh. <gasps> You're such a good girl. See, I didn't... The despite everything, it's still you line. I don't think I realized how much that was going to mean to me. Um. I don't know. This has been a big journey. Lady Shark, I would read that. Maybe not, though. Not if it's a scary story. <laughs> They're adjusting. Well, part of the problem was that we drove up here. Me and my, my mom and my stepdad drove up here while I was sick. I still took my turn driving as much as I could, but I, was, I, was, I had a really bad sinus infection. Um, and we drove with the cats in the car. It took three days to get up here from Texas. And then we hung out with my mom and stepdad for a little bit. And then they left, and then I immediately went to MAGFest and left the cats in the house that they didn't know with a stranger coming in and checking up on them once a day. So they're still kind of acclimating. They're still really sad. Uh, but that's okay. I've made my bed into like this nest. It's a loft bed, so it's like way up high, and there's like a 12 foot ceiling in my bedroom. It's super cool. So I'll go up there, and like we'll just have snuggle time. Um, and they seem to like that. So, and Ella is on her futon, which, like, look at how much space. Like, if you read. Ah! Sorry, Knox got tangled on my microphone. 
There we go. <clears throat> if you remember, my old place was super tiny, so you could like basically see the entirety of my apartment. Now you can't, because it's giant and you'd be sad shelf. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, I don't enjoy reading stories like this, but... Oh my god, and then her dad is adorable. Oh my god! <laughs> Grace and dignity. I'm Lauren. I love grackles. Whatever. Grackles are amazing. Oh, that's right. I'm pretty sure I got all uppity the last time she asked that question. Because grackles are only like some of the best birds in the world. They are so great. And if you don't appreciate grackles, I'm sorry. But they're... Cute little smart asses who make a lot of noise. And that's really all I want in life, apparently, as it turns out. They are loud! C Chrono. Do you think that's a deterrent? <laughs> Besides, they're less annoying than mockingbirds, which are what we had tons of in Dallas. So grackles are at least hilarious <laughs> and smart. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. See, like grackles will chill in the air the Austin airport. Like that's like such a grackle thing to do. Maybe I'll write a story about grackles. Mockingbirds. Okay, have you ever had a mockingbird outside your bedroom window every day for like a year and a half? while you're in elementary school and you already have really bad insomnia, you won't like mockingbirds so much. They didn't imitate car alarms, thank goodness. Okay, well if you do read about grackles and you find interesting grackle facts, share them with me. They're apparently not corvids. I was blown away because I thought that all of the like, super clever, super funny, smart ass little blackbirds um, were corvids, but apparently not. So I have not played What Remains of Edith Finch, and I'm not going to. From what I understand of it, it is super not for Lawrence. No, they're not! Wait, noisy miners are a bird? Sorry, I got distracted. By the game. <laughs> I'm sorry, YouTube, you're probably gonna be like, what is Lauren doing? Just being Lauren. I'm just so happy to be streaming with you guys again, and this game is just prompting lots of talking about everything. Both that is and that isn't this game. <coughs> she seems excited to see her mom. <laughs> yeah. Now that we know why it was short notice, maybe it was just like, I am about to have a breakdown. I had a friend who had problems with agoraphobia apparently when she was younger. Um, and it got in the way of her ability to... I don't know that I want to hear the screaming. <laughs> it's like there's dark and there's dark. And like there's like dark and I love it. And then there's dark and I can't do it. So Rainbow Lori Keats. That's an interesting name for a bird. Yeah. Oh no. What just happened? Oh, Nox lay on my mouse. Nox, are you helping? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Who's my baby? Such a cutie. Oh my god, noisy in a friendly sounding way. Those definitely sound like my kinds of birds. Yeah, like this is like a nice bit of of giving you the context without making it sound unnatural. I don't even know if it's spookiness. I'm, I, but like, I like, I like some dark things about human nature because I think there is darkness in human nature, but I don't like things that are really twisted. Like, I, has, I like things that are dark, but not twisted. Um, like one of my grad school professors um, was, uh, she's uh, Theodora Goss, and she and I are very similar stylistically. At least my short stories um, are a similar genre to her writing. Um, but I write dark and she writes dark and twisted and that was kind of what made me realize that was a difference there so her mom is really good yeah 
Greg, we're gonna do that. Townie Sentry. Oh my god, Fuzzy Werewolf, these sounds like the best birds ever. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting now knowing that May is like depending on like things here being the same so that she can be grounded. It kind of re like puts into perspective like her reaction to change when she's like, no, I desperately need this to be the same. Because if, if this isn't the same, the entire world is going to unravel in front of my eyes and I just can't exist anymore. You know? Like, she's like holding it together here, but like the more things change, the more it does that. Her little friend, Greg. <laughs> it's a whole new world. Uh, hmm. <laughs> like, there's their their dry humor is really fantastic. Hi, Mom. Are you going to talk to me about eels? <laughs> oh, I guess Greg is short. Okay. Well, I'll pay attention to that this time. <laughs> oh, really, Annie? I haven't really spent much time in Pittsburgh. I'll probably be going back now that I can drive there. I have to find friends in Pittsburgh and Philly and go visit them. <laughs> I love this. I love like her mom is not like, you shouldn't call people old. Her mom is like, I too will be snarky and awesome. <laughs> I'm just like, like deadpan. Well, from being ancient, honey. <laughs> Holy cow. I'm pretty sure I was impressed by that last time. <laughs> like there's just, like this they're just so charming. Oh my god, is this the eels book? Please be the eels book. Oh my god. It's interesting. Yes! Eels! In a while. <laughs> so my friend Greg is playing this or has played through this game recently. I think he beat it for the first time, but he hasn't played through second run and like everyone I know likes the eels line but like Greg really likes this whole thing so yeah if we're just like talking in like discord or just hanging out in person he's just like eels and I'm like eels and we're like eels honey <laughs> pretty great <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> oh my god hi <coughs> I'm a little excited about streaming again can you tell did I even... Ah. Uh. <laughs> Hello, and good morning. I'm Lauren, and I know what I'm doing. Oh, jeez. I knocked over my trash can with my foot. My mom decided... Speaking of moms who are weird, my mom decided that I absolutely needed a metal trash can in here. So she, we kept going to stores, and we just didn't find one, and she was like, no, you so she ordered it online and had it sent to me and I can't figure out how to get it out. But I now have, <clears throat> watch me destroy everything trying to show you, my trash can. <laughs> my mom was so excited about this. So, <clears throat> yeah, good times. <clears throat> All right, did I get that right? We're good. Okay. No, I did get it right. <sighs> oh man, eels, mom. <laughs> so great. I mean, you can visit my trash can if you really want to. I'm kicking my feet. That's how you know I'm really excited. 
And it's not the Lone Star, even though it kind of looks like it. By the way, if you're ever in Texas and you see a star that looks kind of like that, but like has like a very specific pattern, it's the Texas Lone Star. And people will put the Lone Star on like everything. Yes, I want to know the easy missable spot. What did I do wrong, Andrew Mallon? Now that I'm experiencing Pennsylvania winter, I get it. You can't do construction when there's like inches of snow outside. My mind is blown. Look, this is new to me, okay guys? I'm from Texas. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my god, you peeping Tom. Wait, his name's Tom. <laughs> Are you serious me? Well, May confirmed perv. Although she doesn't really comment on it. She's just like, yep, I did that. Okay, May. Let's go harass your neighbors. Twigmire. This is the motion character option. <laughs> That's really adorable. <laughs> what? There we go. Okay, I'm satisfied. Maybe not. I don't actually believe in property damage in real life, but Give me the option to jump on things in fiction and like, you better believe that that jumping is going to jump. Boing! Squirrel! <laughs> Did you see that? I totally jumped on that squirrel. Yeah, Twigmire is my good neighbor instead of my, my jerk neighbor. Selmers! Now I understand why everyone got- everyone was like, oh my god, it's Selmers! And I was like, what's the deal? Now I get it. She's really awesome. So I'm actually curious because when I first started talking to her, there was the context of everybody being like, Selmers is amazing. So now I get it, but I want to see what it's like without other people telling me she's amazing and see what she's actually like at the beginning. May is like so proud about that. <sighs> well, I guess proud isn't the right word, but you know what I mean? <clears throat> So how have you been? Yeah, that's okay, Selmers. You're way too good for him. Oh, man. I like to believe that things will get a little bit better for everybody somehow. <clears throat> hey, Sirius Inc. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just like just the writing is so amazing. It's so distinctive. Some see Silver's actually seems legitimately happy to see me, which is cute. Mr. What's your name? Why are you on what's his name's porch? What you're doing on my porch? I can't do accents very well, so. All right. Chazakov, that's it. I'm always so close. I'm like, it's Cha. Chazakov. <laughs> yeah, about that. Uh.
Yes! Best song in the game. Yeah, it's nice that they start you off with people who are relatively positive towards you. I mean, this dude yells at you, but that's okay. Hello, Mr. Glasses Gramps. How are you, Mr. Glasses Gramps? Oh my god, it's children! <clears throat> this did not mean anything to me last time around. Yeah. Like, that's just like a little thing to just drop on you and you don't know the context. Oh, that's one of those, like, in case of fire, I have cats stickers, isn't it? I should get one of those. I have cats. And I don't like fire. Hi, children! Oh my gosh. Oh! Oh, it's little Joe! That comes back! <laughs> At least they recognize that she's a grown up. <laughs> Hello, smoke break cat. Hey, G. How do I say go? G zero O H Z. I'm not. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. I'm, I, I might just call you Go. Is that correct? <coughs> Um, so I played this game before, and I played it all the way through, but they've since added content and there's another path. So I'm now going to play the other path with the added content. And I'm going to be talking a lot about, well, okay, I'm just talking a lot about everything that doesn't have anything to do with the game because that's kind of how I roll. Um, but we're going to be talking about story and things with the, with the perspective of having played through all of the game and knowing the plot. Um, now we're going to be kind of noticing things we didn't notice before. Goose! Goose! Hmm, I don't know. Hmm. Oh no. Oh. Don't give up. Oh. <laughs> People do get pretty desperate. Oh. Ah, uh, boy, is that dark in hindsight. <clears throat> Killing people to uh, guarantee jobs. There's a complicated relationship between that and the, the story and that. interesting how like at first he's like oh man we can we can relate on this like you have my sympathy and then he's like oh you're just a spoiled child and I'm like kinda <clears throat> wow I'm that's really cool Casey, my friend, I'm sorry. <sighs> I'm sorry, Casey. <clears throat> it's so upsetting, you know? Like... I don't know if there's actually anything you can do with this or just bounce the bouncy ball around and marvel at how Katie Washington is a hero to us all. <coughs> <coughs> the singing repairman. Timscaping is the landscaper. That's pretty great. <coughs> 
Carol, Carolly, Orly, Carolly. Okay, that's pretty great. Yes, Katie Washington, thank you. Thank you for inspiring us all, Katie Washington. <sighs> yeah, the last time somebody said that ADHD pilot, that was it was Scott Benson trolling me and I didn't realize it, so. Oh no, I can't go visit Pastor K. <clears throat> Hmm. There was something. What was it? What was I? What were we talking about? What did I get distracted by? What did I get distracted from? Tunnelfish. <coughs> Not untrue. Haha. <laughs> Thanks, May. Uh. Shall we do crimes? Do you want to do crimes? Let's do it. Oh, what? I can't do crimes. Okay, well, no crimes today. Have no fear. Crimes will happen another day. Disaffected youth. <clears throat> I too am disaffected, but I am not a youth. I think they might all be taller than her. Her usefulness to them has suddenly expired. <clears throat> Not worth keeping around, this adult. She's none of the useful adult things. So there's something secret, you say? Well, I can't jump on the trash can, but I can pretend to be in the trash can. Like, look at me. I'm spying on you from the trash can. The trash me. Alright, anyway, enough being a trash me. <coughs> so there's something skippable in here, huh? I'm actually not jumping, so I can try to see it, whatever it is. Yes, pretzels. Okay, well, I'm just gonna start jumping again. Nope. Alright, so you guys told me there's a thing in here. A missable thing in here. Okay. Okay, well, I will just keep my eye out. I s did you see Chrono? I walked like the entire walk of that without jumping. I think I deserve a high five for that. Yes. Right, continuing the adventures of Trash May. Oh, it's not meowing. Possibilities. 
Oh, I came across a restaurant called Possibilities and I was excited. <laughs> and why is it in quotes anyway? Meow. I didn't go there, I just saw them advertise tea. Oh my god. Only the best! <laughs> so interesting. Mm, yeah. <laughs> hmm. I hope I didn't cut off my friendship with Glory. Hill. <laughs> oh, May. The old pickaxe, which I can't go into yet. Yeah, and to be fair, telemarketing is pretty awful. Yeah. It would probably help me, because I'm really... Oh, God. Yeah, this is like the nightmare of a repetitive job. But it's a job. Yeah, there's like... <sighs> also, you notice how it's uh, an older man talking to a younger woman and calling her honey? And like, <clears throat> that's just kind of how it is. I bristle when people call me nicknames like that. Basically, the only way you can get away with calling me a nickname like that is if, like, it's, like, a specific cute nickname to our relationship, whatever it is. Otherwise, I will be cranky. Smash the patriarchy. Smash capitalism, too, while we're at it. Look at these poor people. I'm sorry that telemarketing is garbage. I'm sorry that there's not jobs available. I'm sorry that you can work your fingers to the bone and still not be able to take care of yourself if you get sick. I don't know, she might be older. I just assume because usually <clears throat> honey might not be the word if she were older enough for him to notice that she was older, you know? I don't know. But I'm going to jump on all the trash cans. Oh man, the one true bromance. Hi, bromance bros. <clears throat> Oh, that's all we get for now. No, I don't think the honey's meant to imply they're together. At least to me, it's very clearly, um... Just like what you call women, so... Click clack diner. Oh! I can poke the, uh... Poke the arm with a stick. We're gonna do that. No. back is a little bit sad. That's okay. I'll fix it eventually. Alright, you ready to snack Falcon it up, friends? Those boxes aren't supposed to be there because I should be able to jump there. They've cut off my jumping. 
getting in the way of my jumping? Can you believe the nerve? Snack to school. Oh my god. Oh my god! Look at how happy he is! <laughs> oh my god! That is so cute! Oh my god. Oh, good point, T. I did not even think about that. Oh my god, he's just like so excited. Oh my god, is that a Greg Boogie emote? That's amazing. <clears throat> I love him. He's really great. I'm actually really looking forward to getting to know him better because... Yes, no, well like... So somebody mentioned, I think, in the game that Greg is bipolar. <laughs> there are some things we have in common. <gasps> oh my god, he's so cute! I'm gonna be sorry to not hang out with B because her sarcasm is really great, but um... You can't argue with this, can you? It's interesting because, like, this, she doesn't verbalize in any way in the game, but it definitely makes sense that she thinks it, so. Mom, his eels, and the funny little thing on her head. Well, he is dapper! Look! Greg is a dapper fellow. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh my gosh. I know I'm looking forward to the Greg story. It was just because, like, I, it's easy to write him off and to, like, be affectionate towards him, but not really. <coughs> but, sorry, I'm, like, coughing and smacking into my desk and consequently, like, the camera is shaking. But at least it's not falling this time, right? <laughs> He's so cute. Oh, my God. How are you so cute? <clears throat> oh, Angus. Oh my god, it's B. Yeah, Space Dragon was supposed to be a practice song, but it was also pretty hard, I think. Oh dear. Yeah, look at her face. Look at, like, the... the oh. Yeah, I know Proto, but so so like I've kind of like known that there's more to Greg, um, and there's the game gives you enough even if you pick the B route to kind of know at least some of it. Um but you don't know what it is, and if you don't scratch below the surface, the thing is like but I guess both he and B have that in common. <laughs> like many of my friends over the years, um, because I'm an incredibly uh nosy and stubborn person. Um, and tend to seek out people like them. Um, if you just interact with them superficially, you will never know what's under there. But there's a lot. Oh, you're right! She's not smoking! What the heck? <coughs> <coughs> oh, good. I still have a little bit more. <coughs> Thus concludes my tea. Yeah, no, like, that's the thing with the two of them. If you... If you don't dig in under there. You have a very superficial... Because they, they don't bleed their hearts out to everybody. They're not like me. Um, but, like I said, like both um, Greg and B remind me very much of specific friends that I had growing up. Um, May, kind of? I don't know. I guess May is really nosy and annoying, too. Just, I think, in a different way.
<laughs> That's computer jumps. Mage, I should smoke. I could see that. Oh my god. Greg just won't take no for an answer. He's like, no, we're gonna do this. It's gonna be awesome. The, um, crocodile gnome guy in the background. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Oh no! <clears throat> Not so good, unfortunately. I really want to cover... I really want to cover the, the band songs. I need to see... I need to see if Curious Quail will do that with me. And maybe pull in a few other friends. Maybe we can get Danny to play trombone on the bass part. That would be hilarious. <coughs> that was not close. That was a total mess. But I tried. It was okay. B is unimpressed. Oh, man, May. Oh, man. This is one thing I can relate to. Um, if you always claim that you... Like, if you always point out that you don't know the thing and you don't practice, then it's okay if you make mistakes. If you practice, then people have expectations for you. So it's much better to just tell people, oh, I don't practice. Oh, I don't have any background. Oh, I'm not actually that experienced. I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, it lowers people's expectations um, and makes it okay that you do things wrong. This is how, as a perfectionist, I manage to continue making music in public. Try talking to me about my... Uh, singing background I get asked a lot because I've got a classical style voice like oh you must be classically trained and I'm like not a lot <laughs> that's just kind of what my voice sounded like when I opened my mouth in college the first time I took voice lessons <sighs> but I don't want to um when basically my, my favorite VGM like one of my favorite VGM artists Irutan um permanently damaged her voice um singing um I don't want that so I want to start taking some voice lessons just to make sure that I don't ruin my voice for the rest of my life because I would be extremely sad if I couldn't sing anymore. Like it's like a fundamental, it has become since then a fundamental part of how I interact with the world. Like right now my voice doesn't quite sound like me and it's kind of throwing me off. So I should probably make some more tea or at least have some hot water. That was hard to do, but it was awesome. It's such a good song. 
I don't know what it would sound like with my kind of voice, but um, oh my god! <laughs> Yay! Oh my god, she's so excited! Look at all those exclamation points! I believe that is nine, count them nine exclamation points. That's pretty extreme. However. Not to be outdone, Greg gave us 18 O's in his woo. <laughs> no, there's Angus. No exclamation points. No extended vowels. Just yay. <laughs> Thanks, B. I think it was nine. I think it was off balance. Oh, this is paralleling the pizza that you try to eat towards the end of the game when you are not in a good, not in a good way. The pizza. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. Crusts, huh? I gave Angus a piece of pizza. I'm pleased with this decision. Okay, that's pretty fantastic. I'm not gonna lie. I figured I want I think I wanted to help Angus out last time when I realized he was fumbling around for pizza, but I didn't get a chance to do it in time. But I totally did it. <coughs> pizza crusts are pretty good. At least if you make it with a good dough. I haven't I haven't made pizza in a really 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 long time but I used to make my own dough I use a bread machine because I'm lazy um, but you make like a really really yeasty dough with um, with honey and it's so good oh and it's so cold outside I could turn my oven up high enough to actually make pizza maybe I'll make pizza at some point homemade pizza is pretty awesome <laughs> Look, May has no problem with rats. Yes. This is one little bit of terminology, and I don't know if I pointed this out last time, but um, <clears throat> if you talk about playing out to people who like aren't in a band or no band, they get really confused by it. So, oh, I'm sorry, Sirius Inc. Oh my God, Greg is snuggling Angus. Oh my God, that's adorable. Also, he is really tiny. Wow. I mean, I don't think he's as tiny as me, but it's close. Playing out just means like actually having a gig instead of just practicing. So it's not like it's like any sort of like super special musician slang. It's just the sort of thing that like you forget people don't know. <laughs> Unintentional rhyming, huh? Oh, no, May. No, no. Neither one of these options is any good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, Greg, you are. No, it's true. Angus is literally a gay bear.
This is so sad. So cute. <clears throat> yeah, no, Andrew Mellon, that's kind of what I what I was hoping for. Is we'll we'll maybe take things apart if there are things to take apart. Um <clears throat> but mostly it's the uh the what is it, dramatic irony? Oh, geez, there's the arm. It's right there. Yeah, I know. Oh, May. Everybody else is looking at it, and she's just like, what? Oh, now she sees it. You can see. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. So it's interesting because the arm is not the red herring that I thought it was but I wanted to squish the bug Yeah, I didn't I didn't poke the arm lot at all last time. Oh, I want to squish the bug, but the bug doesn't want to get squished. Oh no. <clears throat> I missed it. I bet if you knock up the uh the sleeve, there'll be a thing under it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I realized that eventually, and I was like, maybe I should turn it over, but it was too late. <clears throat> So this is exactly what driving on the roads here at night, like, between towns is like. Oh, she's not smoking. I kind of want to know, do you guys mind if I ask what it is? Since I could have gotten it and was going for it and did not do it in time. Did they respond to the diamond tattoo? I didn't squish the bug. I don't think I got anything new. Hey, Dad! <laughs> so cute. Oh, May. Oh, Dad. <clears throat> That's really cute. Like, you see, like, how, like, supportive she is of him there? Oh. Like, 
it's just this is so cute so cute you know <laughs> so cute <laughs> that's so great oh we found an arm <laughs> oh man <clears throat> he's just like not processing it you should tell your mom that she's the one who gets excited about true crime stories And then, like, then he's she, he's like, oh, she's not joking. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> oh my god, I'm a good daughter. I'm the best daughter. Watch me jump, Whee! jumpity jump, doop 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 doop. Do you know I never did find anything at the top of the bookcase, did I? Did I I don't want to bore you guys. I can ramble all I want and not worry as much about boring you guys. I'm sure it'll reward bookcase jumping. Well, if it does, New Wax Ghost, I got this. I got this. I am, like, uniquely qualified because I've got the bookcase jumping down. <clears throat> I want to practice the music again. So maybe I can get a perfect on something. <coughs> I want a secret May plushie. I want a May plushie. Wouldn't that be awesome? I would like make her like jump and her little arms like a flying. Okay, let's do it then. We're gonna do it with the different visuals. Oh, she's just chilling. so catchy so it's interesting because um 
because um, the lyrics to that song, like, are very good. You, you tie it to the witch story partway through, um, then it, I don't know, the lyrics make that seem more important than it is because the curse, they don't really go back to that. There's like other stuff going on, but it's not a curse. Like people don't leave as much if the demon gets what it wants. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's very much beast experience, but because they have the whole situation with the, um, with the witch and the curse later on, and you put that together, you're like, oh, this is going to be it. This is going to be the thing. And it's not. It's just like a thing. It, 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 it's thematically relevant to like the feeling of the game and to the character story, but it's not like the plot. Um, but you think it's going to be the plot. Um, you know? Like when we got to the story about the curse last time around, and I remembered the song being Die Anywhere Else, I was like, oh, but you can't die anywhere else because you're cursed. You have to come back. That's how it goes. It's not actually how it goes. You know? I don't know. Ah, so I think that's everything I can do in the house right now. So let's do it. I don't know if that run is impossible, but I'm not good at it. But I'm always really bad at the really fast repetitive notes anyway. Yeah, no, it's really fascinating how many different things they have floating around. And then some of them just kind of like are. <coughs> Yeah, no, I loved it, Andrew Mellon. And I wondered if part of that was because I played it over an extended stretch of time because, like, I got sick and I moved and I did all this stuff. So I was like, like, does it seem super disjointed and hard to predict because there's all these big gaps between my playing it? So. Solar-powered wavy arm, Greg. Oh, kind of like the little, like, hula dancers? That would be pretty great. Now, Chrono, we've still got some time. It is only 9.15. We can go until 10. <laughs> I know the feeling, May. I am addicted to the internet. How did you even get that, May? So this is just going to be those three songs. Yeah, Moth Dude, it's it's really interesting. Like, um, and then and then commenting on how people, um people still try to tie everything together because they want everything tied together. So it was a really fantastic um, conversation thread. I really enjoyed that. Um, and so that's something I'm trying to be mindful of as I play through this and kind of look at the story bits is to not try to tie it all in a boat, which I don't think I would do normally because like I want to try to point out like foreshadowing type things and like thematically relevant. I think that even the things that are red herrings, which there are quite a few of, um, are still thematically relevant so let's go talk to mom yeah no it is kind of nice that may is canonically by may i feel you on that let's see this poor bird, what did it ever do to you? Like, why would you ever not talk to May's parents at every possible opportunity, huh? That was a pretty great quote to randomly pull, Chrono. <laughs> We saw the boxes the last time. Do I have to check the boxes every day? Because I totally will. Um, but I thought maybe just the once would be good enough. 
4 p.m. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, touche! <laughs> it's pretty great. Well, I will go look at the boxes every day just to make sure. Hi, Knox. I know you're super cute, baby cat. I know, I need to give you your fluids tonight. I do, my little girl. Look at what a cutie you are. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, meow, meow. I don't know where the Knox... Oh, there's the Knox box. Knox hasn't been sitting in her box. Yeah, no, the mom talks are really great. She, like, tries so hard to be supportive. Come on up. Come on up. Come on. Come here, baby. Come on. Okay, come on. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Come on, Nox. Oh my gosh, what a good girl. It's a baby cat. Mwah. Oh my gosh, Nox. Such a cutie. <laughs> 24 hour mom. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, we'll try to get the cat cam up. Maybe sometime this week. And I'm going to get... Another cable so that I can hook because I have an actual television. Which means we'll be able to play console games. Um, and I'm going to run a wire from there around the wall or something. Or maybe just around the floor. I don't know. But I'm going to run the wire around to here. And then um, we'll be able to play games and have the television and make things work. Um, so, ow. I've got a really bad knot in my back. Um... But uh, we will hopefully settle in because I really like it here. And provided that I don't make my job hate me so that they fire me, um, I intend to stay here for a while. As long as my uh, laptop. laptop. Landlord. That was a weird word substitution. Anyway, as long as my landlord doesn't hate me. As long as I don't somehow make everybody in the world hate me, I'm going to stay here. I might play Thousand Year Door Chrono. I've actually been thinking about it, um, but I recently got talked into Transistor, so we might do that after Crisis Core. Um, I don't know. We'll see how that how that plays out. Um, yeah, I don't want to get fired, Nick, but I worry. I worry. I've been having a hard time focusing at work. In my defense, I would have been like sick and out of town and stuff, but. I did turn in a thing today, and that person was super happy with me. Because I basically got two bosses, my official boss and my unofficial boss. And my unofficial boss is happy with me. But my unofficial, or my official boss, I, um, I got a little stressed out because she was acting a little weird. And I think she is weird, but I'm like, did I make her mad? So now I have to try really hard to talk casually to her tomorrow to see if I can win her over and make her happy again. Because that's how I operate. <laughs> Because I'm so, so deeply uncomfortable with the thought of somebody being mad at me. But I will do whatever I can to try to make her not mad at me. In case she is mad at me. Um, yeah, so poking sticks with an arm to the stick. Um, let's see. <laughs> They're talking about Transistor. <laughs> Oh my god, May. Oh, May. You should be excited about the arm, Mom, right? Poor May's mom. She's trying really hard. Here we go. I love her mom so much. You see, she's like, what did the arm look like? I'm just so excited. So. <laughs> oh, that's the wrong form of who's, but that's okay. Let's see. <laughs> Uh, oh my god, just like 
The way that their humor plays off of each other is so incredibly delightful. Like, it says a whole lot about how well they know each other and how much they love each other and how much they trust each other. And it's super fantastic. Like, there's just so much goodness and genuine love between people in this game. It really is part of what makes it so good. Because, like, they really get at about how awful people can be. But even, like, the people doing awful things are doing it for a reason that is understandable, if not necessarily sympathetic. You know? Like, there aren't humans who are like, I'm gonna be evil because being evil is cool, or I'm mad and I hate the world. Like, because that's really boring, you know? Um, and I don't think very realistic and really limited. Um, so I think it's really cool that this game humanizes everybody. And people love each other in it. And I think one of my favorite things in any s sort of story. Oh no! <laughs> I'm going to jump on everything, Mr. Penderson, and you can't stop me. Oh my god. <laughs> Such a nice little bit of, of exposition there, you know? <laughs> May, you're really great. I have great affection for you, May. Boing. Do I need to go in there and, and look in the. I guess I'll go in there just in case. And go look up. Just in case. Okay. Alright. Because we just have to be able to get to the tooth, you know? It's really important. I was pretty sure that the tooth was going to be important. And then you only use it in the, um, in the conclusion. Yes, we're talking about the boxes. Alright, well thank you, bonus Josh. Oh, wait! I have been informed that I have missed something all this time. So we're gonna jump on some things and go get that thing. I don't know where it is. Am I at the wrong one? It doesn't seem to be triggering. Am I doing something wrong? Yes, I found the secret of the tooth. Apparently the secret that I didn't find is the secret of the telephone pole, so. Oh my gosh, Nox, are you a happy laugh cat? Oh my god, she's so cute, guys. She's such a good cat. <sighs> No butt icon? Why would there be a butt icon? Oh! Because May is a peeping Tom. Oh, Proto, you can't let the opportunity for a pun go to waste, can you? Hmm. Arnold Applebaum. I bet he's going to show up later in the microfiche. Oh my god, this used to be... <laughs> so good. <laughs> That's kind of amazing. 
Okay, super amazing. This game is so funny. Like, it's hilarious. It's so well written. I'm like, the people who made this game are way cooler and funnier and smarter than me. But I'm glad I get to... I get to experience their wit and humor and smartness and just general coolness. You know? Whee! Oh, hey, I made it. Oh, are you gonna yell at me for being on your porch? Uh huh. <laughs> nope. I may. I do what I do. Hi, Selmers. <clears throat> hmm. <laughs> so have you lost a child, Salmers? <laughs> oh no, May, whatever, you're not one to talk. <laughs> okay, that was pretty great. I never did get to go in that guy's yard. Oh, I want to go in there so badly, I'm going to jump on squirrels' heads. Actually, I'm going to jump on trash can lids. Hmm. Maybe that's not going to do anything. Uh. Hmm. You know, I really want to get to that backyard, but I'm beginning to think that it's not actually an option. Trashy. Hmm. Yeah, well, I can't go up there until they fix this thing. That'll be great. But I can climb up on more things. Oh, I guess she did go, didn't she? She's not here anymore. Hmm. Trash can! So I can go harass B? No, I can't. Okay. Boing. Boing. I'm gonna jump on all the critters. I just think I might just cover the entire soundtrack with my friends. Okay, so Angus is in here. Tragedy. Death chill. I want to watch a movie called Be Nice. Don't you? Like, what would a movie called Be Nice be? You know, like, what would it be about? Hmm? Because I don't have any idea. Meow. 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 Oh, Knox, you're such a cutie. All right. Maybe it would be a bunch of bees buzzing around, being nice to each other. Hey! Hello, friend, you have a hat. Oh, you know my name and you're being friendly. Miss Rosa. We're gonna do all the talking, Miss Rosa. I am so looking forward to learning more about Granddad. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Poet. I'm sorry that May is kind of a jerk. She doesn't mean it. Oh my god, she's so happy and she jumps. Just boing, boing, boing. It's okay, May. You and me both. 
Boing, 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 boing. No, he is a poet. He he hangs out with um, Selmers in the poetry club, and he's not particularly great. And then Selmers shows everybody else what's up. Which and what's up is that Selmers is really cool and good at poetry. You guys have the best bromance. I'm sorry that you get broken up. They have um an instrument in the background. Not this one, but... Um, but they have a filter on it that is kind of old-timey radio-seeming. Which really gets across the feeling of nostalgia. Meow. Makes me think of the double clicks on their cat keyboard. I can't remember what its name is, but it has a name. Where is that? I mean, I guess it's a kind of a honky tonky piano type sound. That one right there. I don't know. It's it's just it's clever instrumentation. Like the sound gives you the feeling that you want. I forgot about that. Thanks, Greg. I see that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he hacks. Uh, oh my god. Greg, you are a beautiful, precious child. <clears throat> that is a very good question. Yes. Tony Centria. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. All right. Greg, you're pretty great. Bye. Boing, boing. I love that it's like back to school, but it's like October. All right, so. Dana you know, Selmers does totally wreck the poetry club. Like she just destroys it. sure are a lot of heartbroken people and single moms and things like that. That was a scared squirrel. Yeah, no, Sel Selmer's poem is definitely one of the moments, like, 
But it really feels like it's like authorial. Like, the people who wrote the game had something to say. And one of the things that they had to say was what they put in that poem. Yep, I'm gonna go talk to Greg. Yeah. May is really cute. She really does love her friends. She's bad at things. But she's cute. Well, because we, they had talked about... They had talked about where they lived, so... Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I think awkwardly socialized, but not a bad person is a good way of putting it. Bunch of saxophones. Wait. This sounds a lot like one of the astral tunes, doesn't it? One of the ones that I didn't like as much because it's more jazzy and less melodramatic. That's... Is that a trumpet or a trombone? Oh my god, my brass friends are gonna kill me. This is a pretty good track. I'd love to see this performed live. <laughs> oh no, jazz is very impressive. It's just not my genre. Angus, you say? <laughs> okay, Corona, that's amazing. Slidey trumpets, fat trumpets, curly trumpets, long trumpets, and bendy trumpets. <laughs> that's pretty great. Oh dear. Stringed trumpets. Okay, now we're... <laughs> Although, actually, um, my trombone friend, which if you watched our cover of Astral Alley, my friend who was a trombonist in that, um, he and I were talking about instruments and came to the conclusion that the flute is actually more like a brass instrument than a woodwind. Like the articulation and the embouchure and the like use of harmonics, all of that is very different and it has more in common with the way brass instruments work than a read instrument. I don't, I don't know. I, I found that... F I've, I've been playing flute for a very long time and I was fascinated by that, so... <coughs> Aha! Yay! <sighs> oh. Oh, I need to actually get enough sleep one of these days. Oh no. <laughs> I have played I'm not so I mean obviously piccolo I'm not very good at it I've played bass flute and alto flute badly um but Oh my god. Yeah, I know Andrew Mellon. It does really feel that way. Electrocution. That's what's for dinner. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, not a good time. I'm not sure that being mildly electrocuted would explain all of that. So dramatic. Oh man. See this? This is actually kind of what my setup is like in my bedroom. It's really cool. Cause you have like this like nest up top. It's like super awesome. But they rigged theirs up, whereas mine is actually like a thing that I bought to be that way. It's interesting to be here. Cause you don't spend a ton of time here. Maybe you spend more time here if you play Greg's Root. Um, this music sounds like friendship to me. Um, but now that like the most time that I've spent in here is crawling around half dead and heavily concussed. Whew. But everything is great now. Nothing weird is happening. Nothing bad has happened. Everybody is a-okay. Ha-ha-ha. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> oh me. Yeah, don't do that, boys and girls and everybody else. Don't just click on things on the internet. Does this actually happen? Like, can you actually have, like, basically a, a shot for your computer that makes it all better? <laughs> the planet. The skeptic. Right from the beginning, they established that Angus is the skeptic who just has no room for magic in his world. That's pretty awesome. That's so Angus, you know? He's smart. Hey, Dad. <laughs> I love that that line of dialogue is dependent on you having answered the other thing. Um, okay, well, that's good to know that you can do that as an option if your computer does wind up like that. Oh my gosh, Knox, what a cutie. Oh, what a cutie meow. You're such a good meow. Yes, you are. Angus is smart. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, no. I know. I like that too, Moth Dude. I think it's funny. Yeah, well, Andrew Mellon, I promise you I don't visit and never have visited those kinds of pages. And I've still wound up with some of that stuff when I was a lot younger. And I was so horrified and scandalized because I was like, I'm the Pope. I don't even look at that stuff. Because my friends in high school called me the agnostic Pope. Um. Ha 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 ha, Dad. You didn't appreciate his pun. <laughs> I might know a couple of people like that. They're so cute. I mean, I probably was trying to download something, but I can assure you it wasn't porn. Maybe I was like trying to download ROMs so I could play like Japanese games or something like that. That seems like something a little Lauren would do. Hmm. I 
could be on fire. It could always be on fire. <laughs> so great. That's awesome. It's like NetHack. Oh my god, he's cute. <laughs> Thank Greg. <laughs> oh right, I did this last time. It's just it's so good. I need to not cough anymore. Yeah, I definitely had to learn that the hard way. That must have been it, Andrew Mellon. Oh my god, I'm not even going to count the vowels in that one. Suffice to say, it is a very extended word. Yes, May is definitely less innocent than I was as a high schooler. It hurts because it's close to the reality that we live in. You know? I swear her attempts at drawing a space dragon look like Sharkle. <sighs> I'm sorry, Casey. Well, shall we turn in for the night? Oh, I should actually probably turn in for the night, too. Let's do it. <coughs> I like how it's a specifically a sound she makes, kind of cat-like. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Is there a dream this night? No. Okay. All right, my friends. Thank you for bearing with me. I don't think this... Is this my talkiest stream yet? Uh, it certainly is a very talky stream, but I think I'm a pretty talky streamer. So... I am extremely fortunate that you folks are actually willing to put up with my rambling. <laughs> Thank you, Nick Buntline. It is, honestly, it's really nice to get back. I was a little, I was a little anxious about coming back to things. Um, yeah, bonus Josh, I definitely feel like Night in the Woods has been my talkiest game yet. Um, <laughs> thank you, guys. Um, I'm really happy. Oh, hey, um, so just in the interest of community building, since we are a community, is um so for those of you who are an active part of our community and that we know well enough and you still have a little bit of time to get to know us better we are planning on having a flutie pies party house meetup in chicago it's looking like it's probably going to be in august we'll probably be able to fit maybe 15 people um we've had eight people so far express interest so we can fit a few more if you want to have something to do with that join the discord and get to know us because we are not staying with anyone who we don't know well enough just because it's a safety thing. Um, we don't necessarily have to have met you in person, but it would help if I, if I felt pretty comfortable around you. Um, and then another thing, um, sooner than that, is the mods and I have been planning, we're going to do a charity event. Um, we're going to go to Zespera's house, which means I'm going to be flying back to Austin for it. 
Um, and we're going to do a charity event that we are calling the self care -thon Because a marathon that involves poor self-care is not true to how we do things around here. So I'm hoping that these things will be opportunities for us to kind of continue to connect with each other as a community. Because um, I've really enjoyed that. Like hanging out with a bunch of Flutie Pie folks at MAGFest was really one of the highlights of a really good MAGFest. So... <coughs> Then I'll cough into your ear. Um, but yeah, so if you are interested in any of that stuff. You are welcome to join us. So if you are interested in the Discord, if you're not already there, I encourage you to please join us. Especially if you're somebody who hangs out here regularly. Um, like, please, like, come say hi to us. We have been having a lot of fun we even have like people playing D D now once a week like in our one of our voice chats so like it's a really fun group of people um and then i'm obligated to do the social thing so there's the social thing if you don't already follow me but thank you this is my first gaming stream in a month i was concerned about how i was going to go but it feels like it's gone pretty well so thank you for being here for me thank you for not giving up on me thank you for sticking by me um when things have been hard or weird and I haven't been around um, or any number of things. So thank you so much for everything, guys. Um, I am extremely grateful for you. So hopefully we will continue to play games that we enjoy and hang out and have good times. And thank you for appreciating my rambling. Um, it's good to be back. Um, we're going to play through Night in the Woods. I think it's going to be a lot faster this time around. Then we're going to play... Not Chrono Cross. We're going to play Crisis Core, and then we'll go from there. Oh, Kath, I'm sorry you only got to be here for a few minutes. Thank you, Blues. We will be doing um, Dark Souls on Thursday, as usual. Um, and we're going to, when Blues is available, have um, have a little bit of a spoilery info dump section session so that I don't have to do a thing that I didn't want to do. And everybody voted, so we're going to do that. Um, but yeah. Yay. Thank you, guys. You're pretty much the best. I couldn't ask for a better community, so thank you. All right. Good night! Oh, wait, I didn't hit the button, did I?